Hello everyone. In this session, we'll look at how we can integrate SAP Open Connectors with the EPIC HL7 Fire Sandbox. In the previous uh, session, we were able to use Postman and get the access token from the Sandbox. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the same thing with the with the SAP Open Connectors. So now I have the SAP Open Connectors uh, opened up right here. And if I search uh, for anything health related, I don't see, uh, we don't have any uh, pre-built connectors readily available. So we would have to build our own connector. Uh, so I click on build new connector uh, and we are uh, presented with the screen right here. Uh, so let me click on the button create. Uh, we can also import from a JSON file and other means as well. Uh, so I'm going to call this uh, EPIC. And for the connector description, I'll call it EPIC uh, HL7 uh, Fire uh, Sandbox. Now here we can create a hub uh, and uh, I'm going to call it health. Uh, now, uh, we don't have a health. You won't see this uh, drop down, uh, but as you type, you will see this option to create health. Uh, so when you type in health, uh, click on this create option, but I think I've already done a test run. Uh, so I have the health, so I'm going to select health. So any other, like if you were to go ahead and create a Cerner uh, connector, uh, you would also put that under this hub health. Uh, so it's kind of a grouping of uh, similar connectors. And we will leave this uh, type of service as uh, REST API because that's what uh, SAP Open Connectors deals with uh, nicely. Uh, go ahead and click Save and Next. Uh, so that should bring us to the next screen. Now here we have the base URL. Uh, now the base URL, uh, because we are using a DSTU um, uh, sandbox, so if I go back to my uh, Epic, uh, play, uh, Epic system and if you, if you have a look at the uh, uh, app that we built, uh, so let me log in here. We use the DSTU sandbox, so if I go into my Epic uh, Hello World app, uh, so we were using uh, DSTU2, uh, so I'm going to use the, sand, the base URL for the DSTU. Now you, I've already put these uh, base URL values uh, in the video description. Uh, you can also find that on the EPIC uh, uh, documentation as well. Um, now preparation type I can, for pagination I can say page starts with one. Now authentication, so here you have uh, quite a bit of tabs here. Authentication is the main thing that we are concerned about. Uh, so there is, it's a slightly modified version of OAuth 2, but our OAuth 2 flow should be able to handle it. Uh, so select OAuth 2. Uh, now the authorization URL, uh, we can copy this uh, all from the uh, YouTube, uh, uh, from the YouTube environment we created in the last uh, session. Uh, so this is my uh, client ID, uh, this is my client secret, uh, so on. So we can paste the same values. Uh, I believe I have also posted that in the video description uh, so you can use the same thing uh, so for the authorization URL uh, again this these values you can get from the epic uh, documentation so I've uh, I've posted these values as well uh, the client ID key uh, I can post this here uh, the client secret uh, so these things will be uh, it will be specific to your use case so uh, make sure you post your uh, uh, client ID and secret. And then the token URL, I can post this token URL. Again, this one you can get from the EPIC documentation. And I've, uh, po I'll post this in the video description as well. So all these values, except for the client ID and the client secret, uh, everything else is common. Uh, so you can post all, uh, I'll post all these values anyways. Uh, click Save and Next. So we didn't do any other uh, values there. Uh, we just did the authentication. So if you go back to the setup, there's quite a few values there you could have done, uh, but I didn't do any of that. Uh, right now, I'm going to cancel this. Uh, I don't want any of these resources right here. Let me go ahead and cancel it. Um, now let's see if we can, if the OAuth2 flow works. So I'm going to say authenticate instance. I'm going to create an instance. And we all know an instance is nothing but a, uh, but a authenticated uh, instance of the connector. So I'm going to call it Milton Epic. Uh, and I'm going to say create instance. 
Now this is going to take me to the epic page for the OAuth2 flow. Now here for the username and password, uh, if I go to the epic website, uh, you have like uh, if you go into documentation, uh, you have sandbox test data and these are the test data that is available in the sandbox. Uh, I'm going to use the first user of FHIR Camila uh, and epic and epic one as the password. So I'm going to use this user right here. And I believe this is the same user I used in my uh, uh, postman as well. So let me log in. Now, when we created the app in the uh, Epic App Orchard, we didn't uh, we didn't uh, go through with the questionnaire and answer all the questions. So that's why we have this warning here. Say just say continue. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't worry about it. Continue. And how long would you like uh, to have access? Let's say one day, and say allow access. And what this should do is uh, this should uh, go ahead and create this uh, connector instance for me. Okay, so it has created this connect connector instance. Uh, but if I go into my instances, uh, I don't think I'll see any uh, uh, any resources because we didn't add any of them. So no operations. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and add some resources. So I go into this uh, resources right here uh, and I can add some resources. Uh, so let me say cancel here, say add resources blank. Uh, now, the resource that I want to add, if I go back to my app that I created, uh, so if I go back to this app that I created, um, we have uh, permissions for the patient read uh, and observation search as well, uh, observation read as well. So we can go ahead and try with the patient read. And let's see how the patient read itself works. Uh, so if I go into my API specifications right here, uh, and if I search for patient, uh, I should be in alphabetical order. Uh, so patient read and DSTU2, patient, uh, this is practitioner read. Uh, patient read, if I look at tryout, so it's basically the base URL right here, and then the patient resource and the ID. Uh, so if I go back to my thing here, uh, basically I just want this get by ID. So it's going to be the, the patient is the name of the vendor resource. Now for the cloud connector resource, I can give anything. I can give it patient or I can, yeah, with a lowercase p, uh, whatever I want, I can give here. Um, but just for, uh, uh, I'm just going to name it the same way. Uh, but like I said, this cloud connector instance resource name can be anything. Uh, so this will map to the patient resource in the vendor system, uh, which is the Epic system. Uh, so, uh, I'm, but if you want like a common way, if you want to use a different uh, name, that's fine too. Add resource. So now you have, uh, because we said get by ID, so it's uh, saying patient ID. So this is how the cloud connector, uh, the API is going to be. And this will map to, uh, this is the vendor instance. So patient with the, and with the ID. In our case, we kept it the same. So that's good. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this. Uh, so now we have uh, this patient resource that we can try out. Uh, so let me go ahead and click try it out. Uh, now we, it's going to ask me for a patient ID right here. Uh, so again, I have to go back to my uh, sandbox uh, documentation and then sandbox uh, test data. And the ID for this user is uh, right here. So I'm going to take this uh, ID right here uh, and put it in here and say execute. And this should give me the ID, the information about this user. So you can see that we have all this information about this user uh, and so on. So we're able to get all the information about this user. Uh, we've added this resource. Uh, and if I go back to my app itself, uh, I also have access to observation data as well. Uh, so I can also uh, search for do like uh, observation dot read and vitals as well. As long as uh, this uh, patient, um, uh, one thing I do want to see is if the sandbox test data has data for that user. Uh, so 
this person only has uh, data for observation labs. Uh, so even if I search for observation vitals uh, that we have access to, uh, we may not get data because this person only has uh, observation labs data. Okay, so at this moment we have a connector uh, that is uh, pointing to the EPIC uh, uh, DSTU uh, sandbox system and we are able to pull data. Uh, now what you can do uh, later on is uh, once you try to like build a proper application is um, you could have some kind of a formula right here um, that can pull up the patient information and also maybe the practitioner information and also maybe the uh, observation information and then get all the data there and then have like a simplified uh, endpoint that gives you an information about the patient, their practitioner and their observations and so on. So you, you can use uh, any kind of complex formula to, uh, to retrieve data from multiple resources and provide like a simplified uh, output uh, that your app can use. Uh, so that's uh, a quick uh, tour of uh, how you can build your own connector, uh, connect to the uh, EPIC HL7 Fire sandbox systems and some, get some data. Hope this was helpful to you. Thanks.